Hi, this is Tim. Thanks for joining us for our PID series. If you're coming to us in the middle of this series, then please look in the description where we'll have links to all the videos for this. But in this video, we're going to talk about manual control. And in many applications, you'll find that these are perfectly fine instead of PID controls. And also we'll talk about why sometimes, no, these were not perfectly fine. Uh, for this video, we are using one of our Compact Logics trainers, and we are using one of the PID trainers from Industrial Concepts, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Also, in the first video of this series, we went through some details of this trainer and how we're interfacing it with our PLC trainer. So, in our overview video, we went through how we wired our Compact Logics trainer to Industrial Concepts PID trainer. And in this video, we're going to make a very basic program. So we're gonna start with a new project and we're gonna be using a 1769 L16ER BB1B. And we're gonna call this our PID manual control. And then we're going to be using four expansion modules. And actually, if you're coming to us from our lesson where we had added our point IO, this is, we're building the same program. And then we're going to go down to our expansion IO modules and click new module. And we're going to type in an IE2V and that'll bring up our analog voltage input. And we'll just call that analog voltage input. And then we're going to type in an OE2V and that's going to be our analog voltage output. Now we also have our milliamp modules on here and we're going to use these in an upcoming video. So I want to go ahead and add those to it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw those on because we'll probably just keep building onto this program right here. So now we're going to type in an IE4C and we don't have the heart version. We have the regular version. So this will be an analog current input. And then we will have an OE2C, and it'll be the non-heart version as well. And that'll be our analog current output. And that's actually all the programming we're gonna do now. We're gonna go ahead and download this program. So we'll go to communications, who active, and then we will go in here, download now if you need any help creating a programs or downloading a program because i know it went fast through that we have videos on all of that and i'll put those down in the description and we're back in run mode i'm going to turn the fan back on and i'm going to turn the speed all the way wide open let's talk about just manual control in other words what if we were to walk up here and look at this and just say all right, I needed it about six inches. So we're gonna go to controller tags and then we're gonna open up local colon three colon O and we're gonna be looking at channel zero. So we're just gonna eyeball this and let's just throw 5,000, which we learned in the previous video is five volt. Okay, and I look and I notice, all right, I'm too high. So let's go down. Oh, let's just try 3,000. Ooh, look at me. I'm pretty lucky there. And we need to go up a little bit. So maybe we're now we're going to go at 3,500. Uh, need a little more. 4,000. Whoa, went too much. Let's go for 3,700. Oh, I'm pretty close. Okay, so that may work. And you just saw it took quite a bit of error and quite a bit of me looking at it to get us here, but we look pretty good. And that is basically what a manual control system would do. It starts up and at some point in time we walk by it and we make an adjustment. Like we saw we were going up too high and oh, we leveled off too much. And then we make another adjustment. We make adjustments until we get it pretty much where we want it. Well, first, what is the problem with this? Well, there's two problems with it is first of all, and that's what I love about this trainer is it has several different ways to vary it, is what if our process varies some? So it just dropped down because I closed this valve. Well, now I gotta walk over here and I gotta be, oh, I'm looking a little low now. Let's go, oh, what are we gonna try this time? Let's try 5,000 again. Ooh, 
That was pretty good. So now I'm the expert operator. It's going to be my job to come over here and always adjust this because I, you know, I get it right. I mean, it pretty fast. But what happens when I call in sick? Then all of a sudden, there's nobody to adjust this thing. And people are like, we don't know what to do. So there's the problem really with manual control. Now, there are a lot of systems out there that run this way that, you know, maybe, I mean, I even see them that, you know, there's a combustion valve connected to a two inch line and the guy knows, yep, let's crank that thing about 15 degrees and we're ready to go. And maybe that's okay. As long as you have that really experienced operator or really good training, but there's a lot of variability to it. So in the next video, we're going to talk about on off control because all right, we saw manual control doesn't necessarily work, but there are a lot of applications where on off control or mainly, let's say I wanted it at six inches. Maybe I turn it on at eight. I turn it off at four and I regulate it between these two spots. It may be okay. So I hope you like this video again, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Any questions that came up, put them down in the description. Also check out links for our trainer and industrial concepts trainer in the description. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.